Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. This is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, and you are joining us for our time of daily reflections. This is the time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer, and uh, to to reflect upon the text and at least hear my uh, my my reflections. Uh, if you happen to be joining us live, like Loretta and Dick and Nancy, I encourage you to drop us a line there in the the comment box. Let us know that you're there, and uh, and uh, let's also it's a great place for you to put your thoughts on the text as well. Uh, whatever happens to to be bubbling up and how the spirit is speaking to you so uh, we have been using the revised common lectionary daily readings as the basis for our time together and we pick a psalm and we read the same psalm all week from different versions and today we're reading uh, psalm 121 from the new standard revised version the nsrv and then uh We've got a, a reading from Acts today. We're continuing on in Acts. Well, good morning, Martha, and good morning, Dick. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump into our text, shall we? Our first reading this morning comes from uh, is Psalm 121, and this is the NSRV version. So let's listen to the, the words from the psalmist this morning. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going, you're going out and you're coming in from this time and forevermore. Such beautiful words from the psalmist. Well, good morning, Flo. Glad to see you're joining us. So uh, our next reading comes from the book of Acts, and this is chapter 26, verses 1 through 18. Uh, let's listen to these words about Paul. Agrippa said to Paul, you may speak for yourself. So Paul gestured with his hand and began his defense. King Agrippa, I consider myself exceptionally fortunate that I stand before you today as I offer my defense concerning all of the accusations the Jews have brought against me. This is because you understand well all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I ask you to listen to me patiently. Every Jew knows the way of life I have followed since my youth, because from the beginning I was among my people and in Jerusalem. They've known me for a long time. If they wanted to, they could testify that I followed the way of life set out by the most exacting group of our religion. I am a Pharisee. Today I am standing trial because of the hope and the promise God gave our ancestors. This is the promise our 12 tribes hope to receive as they earnestly worship day and night. The Jews are accusing me, King Agrippa, because of this hope. Why is it inconceivable to you that God raises the dead? I really thought that I ought to oppose the name of, Je of Jesus, the Nazarene, in every way possible. And that's exactly what I did in Jerusalem. I locked up many of God's holy people in prison under the authority of the chief priest. When they were condemned to death, I voted against them. In one synagogue after another, indeed in all of the synagogues, I would often torture them, compelling them to slander God. My rage bordered on hysterical as I pursued them, even to foreign cities. On one such journey, I was going to Damascus with the full authority of the chief priest. While on the road at midday, King Agrippa, I saw a light from heaven shining down around me and my traveling companions. 
The light was brighter than the sun. We all fell to the ground and I heard a voice that said to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why are you harassing me? It's hard for you to kick against the spear. Then I said, who are you, Lord? The Lord replied, I am Jesus whom you are harassing. Get up, stand on your feet. I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as my servant and witness of what you have seen and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles I'm sending you. I am sending you to open their eyes. Then they can turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God and receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are made holy by faith in me. Well, friends, that is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, uh, let's uh, continue practicing our breath prayer. And our breath prayer this morning is we will breathe in, speak, Lord. And as we exhale, say, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Breathe in, speak, Lord. Hold it. Exhale slowly, for your servant is listening. Breathe in, speak, Lord. Exhale. Your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Breathe in, speak, Lord. Breathe out, your servant is listening. Breathe in, speak, Lord. Breathe out, your servant is listening. Two more times. Breathe in, speak, Lord. Breathe out, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Well, amen, amen. I know we just do that for two or three minutes, but it is definitely a spiritual practice that if you can spend 20 or 30 minutes doing it, um, it really will open you open you up to the to the movement of the spirit. So uh, we've been using our Wesley Study Bible for our notes, and we've got several for this particular section of Acts. 
Uh, Paul's speech before Agrippa fulfills the prophecy that he would carry my name before kings. As in other defense speeches, Paul begins by reaffirming his Jewish heritage. The hope in God's promise to the Jewish people refers both to the coming spirit and the resurrection of God's Messiah. Although Paul does not initially name Jesus with regard to resurrection, his recollection about his past as persecutor of Jesus' followers hints about his thoughts. His earlier pursuit against the believers reveals how he, like his accusers, rejected that hope. Paul's account of his encounter on the Damascus Road shatters his conclusions about Jesus. Jesus' resurrection and the Christian faith. This version focuses on Paul's calling received directly from Jesus. A spear is a sharpened stick for prodding and steering cattle. The addition of the proverb about kicking against the spear alludes to Paul's stubbornness in resisting God. The purpose of Jesus' appearance was to appoint Paul as servant and witnesses, which identifies him with those he persecuted. Paul's divine mission was universal in scope, included inclusive of the Jewish people and the Gentiles. The creation of such a community comes through God's transforming work which sets them apart as God's people. Some pretty good notes this morning. Hmm. So, you know, this, um, this part from Acts in chapter 26 is just a small part of a larger narrative of Paul's time in prison, but it's an important one. It's here that Paul tells his call story or his testimony of how he became a follower of Jesus. He retells his past, he retells of his Jewish faith and how he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. You know, we all have a testimony story and they're unique to us. Our past our, and our future are all unique to us. And it raises the question, how often have you told your story? Or what parts of your story do you make sure that you include? You know, it's interesting to me that Paul, in Paul's retelling of his story, to, that he leaves out the part of being struck blind for three days. I wonder why he left this out. But you know, if I think about my own story, there are some parts of it that I do leave out depending on who's listening. Sometimes I think we struggle in telling others our testimony story. And I think we struggle probably because we don't think our story is meaningful and spectacular like Paul's is. Or maybe it's just because we lack self-confidence that anyone would really want to listen. But you know, our insecurities don't really matter because it's, of course, it's our story, but more importantly, it's God's story. It's God's story of how God moved in our lives. It's, it's God's story in how we came to see God's grace. And if it's God's story, then God will fill us with the Holy Spirit to be able to tell those who need to hear it. For in hearing our stories, they might see God just like we see God in Paul's story in the text. You know, you can tell that this wasn't the first time that Paul has told his story. He's probably told his story hundreds of times by this point before he told it to King Agrippa. And that's what we need to do. We need to practice telling our story. So that's the challenge I give to you today on this beautiful Tuesday, is practice telling your faith story, the long version and the short version. Because friends, you never know 
when God will need you to tell your story to someone who needs to hear it so that they can have their own story with God. Well, friends, just some reflections of mine. Would love to hear your your take on this, this particular piece of scripture. So uh, drop us a line in the comment box or give me a call and we can chat. You know, it's always good to keep the conversation going. Well, uh, it is Tuesday. It's uh, a little cloudy here, but it's definitely going to be a nice warm day here in Beaver Dam. I hope you get the opportunity to get outside and enjoy this day that God has made for us. So uh, let's close with a word of prayer before we take on the day. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the stories that are in our lives, especially for the stories that deal with, our, with your transforma transforming love that we experience each and every day. God, you have blessed us in so many ways, and you call us to share those blessings with others. God, show us the way. Open our hearts and minds to see the direction you have for us, the direction you have for us individually, as well as the direction you have for us as the church universal. God, we ask that you be with those who might be suffering today, those who might not be feeling the best or dealing with financial difficulties or struggling either physically or mentally. God, we just ask that you continually wrap them in your loving arms. Let them feel your presence. Let them see your action in their lives. And God, we ask the same thing for us, that you open our hearts and minds to see your activity that happens each and every day in our lives if we just take time to notice it. And God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.